Joining me now, Republican Congressman Tim Burchett of Tennessee. He's a member of the Oversight Committee. Congressman, thanks very much for being here. Thank you for having me, ma'am. So, Congressman, uh, what what is the response, or what do you think the response should be uh, to Hunter Biden? Uh, considering, I mean, he had previously said pretty directly, he in fact demanded a public hearing, and now he's saying no. Well, I, I think his lawyer's advising him what to do here. I think um, probably um, legally it's the right decision. Politically, I think it's the wrong decision. I think they're trying to run the clock out. Obviously, you're running up against election years and and a divided Congress. And so, you know, I, I think his lawyers just advised him on those grounds, and that's what they're doing. He, you're, you are correct. He did say in the beginning, that was the holdup. I want a public hearing. I want a public hearing. And then he marched in with his lawyer and his entourage for a, you know, a little cameo in one of the committee meetings. And then when Marjorie Taylor Greene's turn to speak, he got up and walked out. And so, you know, it, it's just, it's political theater, ma'am. I mean, I guess you, if he's he probably doing a documentary, I think somebody said. So, you know, it, it's going to make for good ratings. But honestly, I, I think that it's, it, you know, I have a saying in politics that, and it's about, and I'm guilty of this as well. Americans want their pizzas in 30 minutes or less. And that's about our dadgum attention span. And so <laughs> we're going to move on. You know, you know it and I know it because when, when the CNN ratings show that, that, that Hunter Biden's not a hot issue, they're going to go on something else. And, um, you know, it, it's just the well, way it is. Well, we're talking about and it, for the record. We're, I know that because it's still an issue. But, you know, the next couple of weeks, it, it's Congress, ma'am. They're going to do something else that's outrageous. And you all are going to um, you all magnify it. And I get that. And I, that's that's what I think about the media. I mean, it's, it's kind of fun to watch how it goes because so, I'm sometimes at the brunt. Of, of your all's um, bayonet, so um, I get it. <laughs> uh, you you have you have had some uh, some interesting times over the course of the last uh, year. Uh, I mean, speaking of uh, you know media attention, uh, Hunter Biden's attorney here said that the proceedings that you have, the impeachment uh, proceedings, are not a serious oversight proceeding and are in fact an attempt to resuscitate the moribund inquiry with a made for the right wing media circus act. Do you think that's what's what you guys are doing in Congress? How do you respond to Mr. Lowell? No, ma'am. I mean, he, he's hitting all the high notes there. I'm sure that's, again, his focus group is told him that's what the market wants. But the, the reality is he does not want to allow his client to appear with, with Tony Bobulinski and all these other people. I mean, Bobulinski, ma'am, in those closed-door meetings, I was impressed with him. I leaned over to the stenographer, a lady who was – making some notes or whatever beside me. And I said, I said, does he have any notes? And, and she said, no, apparently he doesn't. And he was remembering things. He was remembering exact dates, times, places, amounts of money and locations. And these were all over the world. And so um, I, I do not believe that, that Hunter wants to appear with these folks because his Democrats on the committee will have a hard time defending uh, you know, it, they'll be coming in from all angles and the shrapnel will be flying. And that's the and, and the and his attorney, frankly, won't be up there to tell him, you know, say yes, no or don't respond kind of thing. And your emotions get carried away and you and you get ticked off. And that's what pe that's what, you know, both sides want is their um, their opposition to get mad and and get up there and start responding to stuff that they shouldn't. So, you know, I, I, his attorney is probably advised him correctly, but. You know, it's rules for thee and and not for me is, is so, basically the, the It's a remarkably candid assessment of what is actually going on in these in these hearings, sir. Um, look, at the end of the day, all of this is not uh, aimed at Hunter. It is aimed at his father, the president of the United States, uh, Joe Biden. Um, and there is the ongoing impeachment inquiry. Uh, your colleague, uh, Ken Buck. Uh, announced earlier this week he's going to leave at the end of the week, uh, end of next week, uh, Congress entirely after he had announced he was going to retire, but this abrupt leaving was new. Um, he told reporters, uh, quote, we've taken impeachment and made it into a social media issue as opposed to a constitutional concept. Is he right? Well, I'm not an attorney, but there's a lot of... Um 
workings going on behind him. Buck's a good buddy of mine. He was, and he and I were sitting side by side on January 6th when it all went down. Matter of fact, we were, I was the very last house member to leave the house floor on January 6th and, and Buck was right in the mix there. Um, so he's a, he's a dear friend. So I would never question what he said because he is an attorney and he, he gets it probably a little more than I do. I'm more of a, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not an attorney. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but, but there is a lot going on behind the scenes there, ma'am. You know, with Lauren Bobert um, running in that seat, switching in that, into that district, this kind of puts her in a bad position. And, and there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes there um, that, that, are, that, are, that have very little to do the, with the Constitution, although I do not question Congressman Buck's um, reasons and motives for leaving you know he, he's a family so and he wants to get and then i suspect you, you'll see him as one of your colleagues very soon <laughs> so you think he is retiring or leaving congress early specifically to prevent lauren bobert from being in congress i don't know if that's his intention but there's a lot of talk of that you know i, I like i said i couldn't question his his honestly i mean he's he's, he's a He's a very moral, decent human being, and I hate to see him leave. I really do. But there, there is a lot going on behind the scenes. I mean, this is like this is a made-for-TV movie, ma'am, um, and it probably won't be on the Hallmark Channel either. Um, there's a lot of, you know, everybody wants to call this place a swamp, ma'am. A swamp is a beautiful ecosystem created by God. You know, stuff, water's flowing in. You got all the, all the animals going on around it. This is a sewer. It just, it all flows in and nothing flows out. Washington, D.C. is just an open sewer and, um, and it continues to um, not disappoint me in that, in that regard. Well, when you put it that way, I will say the Hallmark, the Hallmark Channel is a family channel, so uh, yeah. not going to disagree there. Uh, sir, you mentioned January 6th being on the floor uh, with Ken Buck, being the last person to leave the chamber. Um, have you been surprised at how uh, public perception, especially in your party, around January 6th has switched to the point that the former president is saying uh, one of his first acts in office would be, if he's reelected, if Donald Trump is reelected, would be to pardon the people that he calls January 6th hostages? No, because I think um, it was handled poorly from the start, ma'am. You know, I, I had contacted Capitol Hill police multiple times about what I saw, about people I saw in the tunnel that were doing podcasts or whatever they were back then. Um, I'm not sure what the hipsters called it back then. And it was, and I, and I requested Capitol Police. Uh, um, I said, hey, I was there. I'd like to tell you who I saw, what I saw them doing. And they said, yeah, we'll get back to you. Two weeks later, they did not get back to me again. I contacted them again. And then, um, yeah, and it just went on with that. And I had to go on my own volition. Um, Rodney Davis, actually, who's no longer in Congress, was over the committee that oversaw that and allowed me to view the tapes in the tunnel. And I pinpointed and I showed the person who was doing it. And I still was not ever asked about it. Um, and that was one of the key components. If you remember, they were saying they were on the, somebody was broadcasting, telling everybody where we were, which, in fact, they were. And in fact, it was a member of the media. And um, and then, um, you know, the January 6th commission, when they did not allow um, then Speaker McCarthy to rightfully appoint, I believe, Jim Jordan and some other people to it. And Speaker Pelosi did something that's never been done since I've been in Congress or since any of the even the old timers. And heck, some of those guys, I think, came over on the Mayflower. You know, they, they said that they. Um, they were not allowed to put Republicans that they were choosing. And that, that's why she picked Adam Kinzinger. And, um, but does this um, mean that you think that the people that you saw that chased you off the floor that day should get off? No, I, no. They, once they cross those barriers, they're breaking the law. But should they be denied due process? Should they still be in jail in a Washington hellhole waiting on trial, which they still are? That is not a speedy trial. Um, and, you know, I had people from. So are you Tennessee distinguishing that, between the people that are being held before a trial and the people that have already been convicted? Because what Trump has said is that those have been convicted. He would uh, pardon them. Yeah, people that are going to be convicted, obviously. And they're, you know, and, and of course, our side, ma'am, you got to realize you, you had the Black Lives Matters marches. 
and all those riots that went across the country, millions upon millions of dollars of destruction and very little people. And they, there, nobody was using any facial recognition to identify any of those rioters. I mean, standing on top of burning, you know, police cars, flipping police cars over burning, burning courthouses, things like that. And no facial recognition on those folks. But then on the January 6th. So, you know, I say justice should be applied blindly and it should be across the board. Everybody should be under the same rule. And they weren't. And, and that's just and, and you're going to have a hard time. There's a vast majority of the population who does not trust the legal system. And when things like this happen, they continue to do that. And, you know, it, and it and to and it, it, it was just a horrible situation. I feel like you had some really good people that were there that got caught up in it and they broke the wall right. and they should be accountable. But I'll tell you this, we had Knox Villians that left before it even happened and posted things on Facebook, you know, that, Hey, I was I'm there, you know, whatever. And it was before right. any of the violence and, or any of the law breaking and the FBI showed up at their house. And to me, that's, um, that's a very, has a very chilling effect. And I, and I think they were wrong. I think they, they, um, they overstepped right. their bounds. All right. Congressman Tim Burchett. Congressman, thanks so much for the time at this early hour, especially uh, where you are. Thanks very much. Well, I'm sure I've got plenty there that you can use the rest of the day. <laughs> I bet we got a few things. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. See you soon.